Got it on there, I mean? Yep. Um, this is uh, chapter 15. We're going to talk about the Russian and Apollo space programs first. That's the space shuttle. I saw it launch a couple times. It's a fun little trip to go down there and watch a rocket launch. You can go online and see when they're launching. It's about a four hour drive. Rockets. Do that. Um, this is the guy that invented the rocket. His name was Robert Goddard. And he's an American. And he uh, he invented the rocket ship. That's one of his first rockets. And the idea is pretty simple. You, sh you ignite fuel. It's in a container. When it lights up, it expands very quickly and gives off a lot of energy. And you put it in a container so that that energy can only go out the back. So what you do is you have a little container that's like that that has an opening in the back. And you light up the fuel in this area here. You have some kind of lighter that has an electric spark. And it blows up. And the only way out is that way. And due to Newton's laws, that will propel your rocket in the other direction. That's how rocket engines work. Pretty simple. And they started making rockets. And he had the idea, when these things were shooting off, he was like, what if we could put a person on the top of it? That would be really cool. And he kind of had the idea that people would eventually just go into space and uh, go to the moon, and people kind of said, no, nah, that'll never happen. He was right. Um, we have a bunch of satellites that we put in orbit around the Earth. Um, there's thousands of them up there, and they, uh, some of them are in what we call low Earth orbit, which means going around very near the Earth, and one thing you need to understand that's kind of misleading about most people have a, the wrong idea about most satellites. Most satellites are really close to the Earth. They borrowed my Earth globe, but anyway, we use this little globe. If this were a globe, most satellites are about as far from the globe as my finger is right here. Like that. Just above the atmosphere, going around just right above the Earth. They aren't way out here compared to the Earth. They're just right, they're just right next to it, going around. Now, there are some satellites that are farther out, and there are satellites orbiting the sun. But like the space station, that's just right above the Earth. And when they launch, when they launch something like the space shuttle, it uses all that power just to get outside the Earth's atmosphere and above the Earth and into orbit. And when something's orbiting in low Earth orbit, it has to be going really fast to keep from falling back and hitting the Earth. So it's going... It goes around about once every um, six hours or so. How many people are in the International Space Station? Uh, just a handful at a time. They'll shuttle people up. They'll stay there for a few months and they'll bring them back. So uh, you'd have to look that up, but I'm thinking it's like four or six or something like that. It took it took it took like 50 launches of things or 100 or something. You you could look that up too, but they launch little pieces and hook them together up there and keep launching more and more. And eventually, it, it was big enough. But it went in little launches at a time. The, the thing that can carry the the thing that could carry the most um, stuff was the, was the space shuttle. 
they kind of built these space shuttles that had they had a large payload where they could carry big pieces. And so a lot of it was built with the space shuttle. Carrying up pieces and putting them together. But it was a it's the International Space Station. It wasn't just America that built yeah. it. There were like 15 countries that contributed. Might have been more than that. The first satellite ever launched into space was this one. It's called Sputnik. It says in the reading what year it was. Early 50s, 1951 maybe? Anyone see? Yeah, 1957. 57? Did you have that, Jack? Yeah. Good job. Thanks. So 1957, they flew this satellite. It wasn't very big. Just the size of like a frying pan with things coming off of it, but they launched it up, it went around the Earth a few times, and uh, that was a success. And it was the Russians that launched that, Sputnik. It was the first satellite to go in orbit around the Earth. Kind of a famous bit of trivia. The Russians were also the first person to put a man, the first country to put a man in space. This is him. Yuri Gagarin, he was the first man in space, a Russian. They call them cosmonauts there. Y'all ever heard that term? Cosmonaut? So the Russians were doing this, and, uh, and that was the time of the Cold War. Y'all learned about this in history? Russia versus the, the U.S. was like, uh-oh, they're beating us into space. We don't want them to get ahead of us technology-wise. We need to prove we're better in technology than them. So we started our own space program to get a man in space. And eventually we got a man on the moon. And we, we put a lot of money in it and kind of passed them up uh, in technology during that time in the 50s and 60s. The Russians were very uh, heavily involved in exploring Venus. They had a program called the Venera program, where they launched like 20 different missions. Um, I think eight of the Venera missions actually landed on Venus. And then they had another couple of them that landed on Venus. They landed 10 ships on Venus over uh, a period of about 20 years, starting in the uh, 60s and ending in the in the 80s. This is a picture from the surface of Venus. That thing there that looks like a bunch of teeth there, that's part of the, the lander that landed on Venus and it's taking a picture of the ground there. That's actually a couple pictures that were put together. But um, it's so hot on Venus that it just melts the spacecraft. So it lands, starts taking pictures, and then it melts. None of them ever lasted more than a couple hours. The first one that landed only lasted a few minutes. So it's really hot on Venus. So it's they still have those spacecraft just sitting there, a bunch of melted spacecraft sitting there on Venus. This is a map of Venus showing where all these probes landed. So this is, if, you know, if you took the Earth and flattened it out into a map, you know what I'm talking about? This is like Venus flattened out into a map. The yellow regions are high regions, and the blue regions are low regions. But they don't have any water on Venus. It's all gone. But we think they used to. Early in the formation of Venus, it probably had oceans in the blue regions. But now the oceans are all dried up because it got too hot. What were the Russians looking for? Why didn't they just land one and give up? Oh, they just wanted to explore more, and uh, they tried to make their spacecraft better and able to withstand the heat better. And they did. It went from like just 10 or 20 minutes to several hours. But um, Venus was... It, Venus is like a lot closer than Mars is, so um, it's easier to explore that than it is Mars. Um, 
and we kind of jumped in and took the moon, so they wanted their own thing to explore that we weren't doing. So, Vega was the other spacecraft that they land. Venera and Vega, both of those were Venus spacecraft. So, in response to all this Russian space, uh, in response to the Russian space program, the, the United States got together a bunch of, um, of fighter pilots and um, trained them to uh, become uh, astronauts, and they wanted to put men into space. So this is a bunch of the uh, guys from what we call the Mercury missions. They were early missions to get our guys into space, and Alan Shepard, which is that guy right there, was the first United person from the U.S. to go into orbit. And John Glenn, which is that guy right there, I think, um, was the first guy to... Um, first guy or first U.S.? First U.S., I'm sorry. Orbit. Wait, this guy was the first into space, and that guy was the first to orbit. Right. This guy just went up and came down, and that guy actually orbited. So Alan Shepard and John Glenn, they're kind of famous, famous guys. There's a movie that I have here about their, about their uh, training and missions and everything. It's called The Right Stuff. You ever heard of that? It's kind of a famous movie. I remember my dad showing me this when I was young. It's kind of an older movie, but it's it's good. It shows. From the very beginning, after the it starts out with with uh, the um, the Sputnik, you know, going over and the United States reaction and how they how they found all these fighter pilots and trained them and uh, so forth. It says that Shepard's the one that's on the top left in the picture. Right? That Shepard? Yeah. Kind of looks like you. Oh my gosh, he's thanks. And which one's Glenn? The one that you said it was. That one's Glenn? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's Shepard. Gotcha. He does with them as well. Are you on the really see that? The JFK made a famous speech. Have y'all ever seen this speech? Who does? Speech is to go to the moon and do the other things. Was it at Rice? This is, you'll, you'll hear about this a lot. Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago, why the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. Well, that goes on a little bit more, but uh, that's a famous speech. Uh, that you'll, you'll hear reference throughout your life. The, uh, the, the moon speech. We chose to go to the moon. And so he said that in the early 60s. Um, maybe 1961, does it say what year he, he did that speech? No, he died in 63. Um, well, so he gave that speech and he said, we choose to go to the moon in this decade. And so... The United the, so NASA was like charged with get a man on the moon in this decade to so he doesn't so his speech wasn't a lie and so they had like a time limit and um, the budget for NASA went way up it's uh, less than one percent of the budget now it's like 03 percent of the U.S. budget is the NASA budget. But it jumped all the way up then to like 5% of the U.S. budget, which is enormous. Um, although nothing like the military budget. 
but anyway, um, it's, it's, it, it went way up from what it is now, and um, they spent a lot of money getting, getting this to work. So the first thing what they had to do was develop the equipment to take men that far, um, not only up into orbit, Remember, remember, I said orbit is just is just up and, and going around the Earth, and is real close to Earth. Most spaceships are like that. But no one had been far from the Earth, so they had to develop something to come off the Earth and go all the way to the Moon, which is way across the room if this were a real model. So, um, so fly it way around there, go around the Moon, land on it, and then come back in less than ten years. That's a big job. They had to uh, had to develop all that. They had to figure it out. They had to test it. And so they started with what's called the Gemini Space Pro Program, where they developed all this. This is a capsule right here that the men would be in. That capsule sits on top of the rocket. They had to build a rocket way bigger than any that had ever been built before. And they built these giant rockets and put these capsules on it, launched the people into space. And um, this guy, actually, his name's Gus Grissom, he actually died during the uh, training. The, uh, there was a fire in one of the capsules, and he was in it. This was on the ground. This was not even during the launch. They had the, they had the capsule there in a room, and they were training these guys, and it caught on fire, and <coughs> got trapped in there and died. So there were some deaths and some problems. But they finally figured it out. That's all in this movie, too, if you're interested in watching it. Do you have a note, Sam? My note? Did you get it? Yeah. No, I don't have one. I put it in this card. She was supposed to call me? Yeah. No, American Lit American Lit Teacher. The what? American Lit Teacher. I forgot his name. Oh, were you with the, the uh, teacher? I was, yeah, I was with him. And then I was in my own block. Oh, okay. Okay, well, we're going over chapter 15 here. Okay. Um, so, uh, so anyway, they, uh, the Gemini uh, perfected all the equipment, and um, then there, another uh, program called the Apollo program brought, um, was, was the mission that we're going to land people on the moon. So, uh, each, each Apollo flight was numbered, Apollo 1, Apollo 2, Apollo 3, and it was Apollo 11 that actually got people on the moon. And I, I explained this before, but what they did was they launched from the Earth, they fly through space, they get into orbit around the moon, they have another spacecraft, that a little one, that comes down, lands on the moon, Guys run around, take rock samples, take pictures, jump around in their spacesuits, get back in that little craft, fly back up to the orbiting spacecraft that's orbiting the moon, and dock with it, and then that thing shoots off and comes back to the Earth. And then the, the only way, you're coming real fast when you come back to the Earth. The only way to slow down a spaceship that's going that fast is using the atmosphere. So when you come into the atmosphere, you come at a little bit of an angle, and you shoot through the atmosphere, and the air slows you down. And that's when you see all the pictures of the spacecraft getting real hot and, and becoming red. And they have this, this real heat-resistant tile on the bottom of the capsules that, uh, that, that keeps, keeps it from burning up. And that slows the spaceship down. It slows it down until it... Uh, until it it's going slow enough where it can deploy a parachute, and then, then it floats down into the ocean. And they have ships out there that pick this capsule up. The capsule will float. And uh, that's all in there they show in here. How do you know where it's going to land? Yeah. Um, they can tell about where it's going to land, by where it comes in, where they're kind of aiming for. The, uh, the capsule, when it's coming back, has um, has some some uh, thrusters on it, so it can change course slightly coming back from the moon. And and mathematics and computer.
computers can figure out about where it's going to land. And so they just have ships in the area. And the capsule will land in the water, and it might take 20 minutes for a ship to get there exactly where it is mm -hmm. to get it. But it's, they usually can get it pretty close. Is that movie in black and white? I think it's in color. No, it's in color. Yeah. When was it? It's probably made in the early 80s. If I remember right. Ed Harris, Dennis Quaid, Sam Shepard. It's kind of a long movie, but it's interesting. Um, so these are the three guys, the first three guys on the moon. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. Neil Armstrong was the first guy to set foot on the moon. And he has the famous saying, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. He figured out what he was going to say in advance. They, 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 they had discussions about that, and they were like, you got to say something profound. And he came up with that, and it was pretty profound. So this is video footage of the first moon landing, which was uh, 1969. They just made it in one decade, in less than a decade. <coughs> I was one. They say I watched it, but I don't remember it. Wait a sec. Oh, Covered up by dust from asteroid impacts, 
but it'll take millions of years. Yeah. How long did they have to plan? They ran around for a couple days. Oh, days? Yeah. I thought you were about to say a couple minutes. No, no, they they stayed up there a, a good while. They'd sleep in, on the on the spacecraft. Now I don't. They, we landed. I think we landed six missions on the moon. And I think there were 12 guys that actually walked on the moon. I might have these numbers a little bit wrong. We can check on that. But um, there's like only 10 or 12 guys that ever actually walked on the moon. Some of them stayed in the spaceship that's orbiting. While a few went down, you want to keep a guy up there in case there's something happens. That would a guy in a fire or something, that you want somebody to put it out. So, um, so there, yeah, there were some people that went and didn't didn't walk on the moon. Um, and it was just Neil Armstrong just got lucky. They had said, okay, you're going to go in, in Apollo 1, and you're going to go in Apollo 2, and you're going to go in Apollo 3. But they didn't know which one of those was going to be the one that lands on the moon. They just kept perfecting the, the equipment and the procedures, and it just happened that it was 11 that was going to land. And so Neil Armstrong got lucky there that he was the first guy. What they meant by us just like pushing each other to be the first person. Yeah, how did you yeah. just that first? I think they flipped a coin, maybe. Somehow they, or maybe, I, I don't, it, I think they talked about it in one of these mo movies. I don't know if it was this one, um, how they decided who was going to be out first. Or maybe it was that Neil Armstrong had seniority um, over Buzz Aldrin. Um, there was something, Neil Armstrong was a, was, was a, a, a good, you know, a, a, a big guy, uh, important. He, he had a lot of, a lot of clout in, in NASA, but I can't remember how they decided who was going to be first. Um, but it's all an interesting story. Like I said, you can watch this movie, The Right Stuff. There's another movie that I love. It stars Tom Hanks, and it's about this crew. This is the crew of Apollo 13. Apollo 13 was supposed to go land on the moon. But on the way out, they had a little accident. Something blew up on their ship and damaged the spacecraft. And there were all these problems. Lights were going off everywhere. And they didn't. They had oxygen problems. They had CO2 problems. They had problems steering the thing. They had to rig up all these fixes for this spaceship and uh, just to be able to get home and not have everyone die. It was kind of amazing. But they made it back. This is a picture of them back. And um, Tom Hanks plays one of these guys, like the main guy running the thing. I don't know which one of those it is. But um, that was a that was so the movie's Apollo 13. Um, do you still have that? You still have Apollo 13? Yeah, Did you rent it? Yeah, I haven't been able to finish. Can you bring it back? I will. Um, so somebody else can look at it. But I think you can you can get it on Netflix probably. Um, but that's a great movie, and that's more modern. It's got better effects and stuff. Did you see it? Uh, I've seen it like 10 times. Yeah, it's a, it's a great movie. movie. It's, I have, it's for extra credit. These are for extra credit. So if you watch this and then you take a quiz over it, I, I'll give you the, uh, the bonus points. And so you'll see a lot about uh, Yeah, The Martian. Um, Can we watch it if we have it and like, not rent it out for me? Yeah, uh, yeah, you can watch that one for extra credit too. That's a good one. I have it, but I have it on Blu-ray. Which... <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, wait. Let's watch the video about Apollo 13. the surface of Earth, we approach a space station. Perhaps we're tourists spending a weekend in orbit. Or maybe we're in transit to the moon or Mars. For that's where the space station scores, as a spaceport. 
To launch a craft to the moon or the planets needs an escape velocity from Earth of 40,000 kilometers an hour. From here, it takes a fraction of that energy. That's not real, by the way. That's an imaginary space station. Ours doesn't look like that. Our attempts to beat gravity began with rockets, invented by the ancient Chinese. The fuse on modern rocketry was lit by the American Robert Goddard. Goddard replaced solid fuel with liquid. From Massachusetts in 1926, he launched the first liquid fuel rocket. The Germans pushed forward development in World War II. As a weapon of mass destruction, they unleashed the V-2. It was the brainchild of Werner von Braun, captured with fellow scientists and shipped to America. There, at White Sands in New Mexico, working with the military, von Braun galvanized American rocketry and reached to the edge of space. But the Soviet Union got there first. In 1957, they launched Sputnik 1. The first artificial satellite was in orbit. Its mastermind was Sergei Korolev. He was moving fast, developing a rocket powerful enough to carry a man into space. That man was Yuri Gagarin. On April 12, 1961, Gagarin blasted into history. He made one orbit of Earth and returned a hero. The Soviets were on a roll. In 1963, Valentina Tereshkova became the first woman in space. Next, two men, then three, were in orbit together. And in 1965, the first spacewalk was by Russia. Following a series of unmanned flops, Alan Shepard was the first American in space. But his mission, a month after the gardens, was a modest suborbital hop. Nevertheless, with a safe splash down, American pride was restored and the stakes were up. President Kennedy declared the thrilling jet. Before this decade is out, I'm landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. With this astronaut, the race was on. Atop a redstone rocket and ten months after the garden, America had its first man moved. John Glenn. Concerned though as a light warned of a loose shield, Glenn had a rocky ride. But he made it. And America was in the space race. Two man missions began in 1965 with the more powerful Titan rocket. Including the first American spacewalk, this was a Gemini project. Ten flights that tested rendezvous and docking procedures but the moon the objective in a valuable experience. Gemini 8 in a spin through a misfiring thruster. But luck held and the craft survived. In 1966, the Gemini project successfully concluded. These astronauts had no such luck. In a launch pad fire, they died in their capsule. It was a tragic start to Project Apollo. But, after lengthy modifications, missions resumed. Separating from the upper stages of its rocket, Apollo 8 became the first craft to break free from Earth and slot into an orbit of the moon. It was Christmas, 1968. As the triumphant crew returned, everything was now tested for a landing. Except the lander, and that was tried in orbit by Apollos 9 and 10. Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. The crew of Apollo 11, thrust by von Braun's baby, a Saturn V rocket, towards the moon. Three days later, a lander left lunar orbit for the craters below. While Collins orbited in the command module, Armstrong and Aldrin made a perfect landing. They reached the magnificent desolation of the moon. It was July, 1969. 
Blasting off for the command module, Armstrong and Aldrin rejoined Collins and headed home. With five and a half months to spare, they'd achieved one president's deadline and had the thanks of another. Four months later, Apollo 12 was on the move. 